Okay, everybody, Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a good holiday. Uh, welcome to our first webinar of 2022. And this one is on the Deborah Bird Christmas Bird Count. Um, our webinars are going to be, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the last Wednesday of every month. Hopefully we'll have one almost every month and with varying topics. So we encourage you to maybe make a mark on your calendar that that may come up and you will be notified of them as they, as we progress through the year. Um, sometimes we will have a guest, but tonight we have Carter, who is our executive director and very capable of running a bird count since that's one of his passions. And he's going to let us know how this year's went. So go ahead, Carter. Thanks, everyone. Again, I apologize for the slight delay. Um, tonight, I'm going to be talking about the results of the 2021 Deborah Christmas Bird Count. This isn't going to be the longest webinar. There's only so much I can say about the results, but hopefully you learn a bit, little bit about the count itself and what we saw this year. So next slide, please. So just to start, in case anyone here tonight is not familiar with the Kensington Conservancy and the work that we do, we're a nonprofit charitable land trust who has a mission of protecting ecologically sensitive land within the St. Joseph Channel area. The St. Joseph Channel is a section of the St. Mary's River just east of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. We currently have 10 nature preserves and two conservation easements, which protect over 800 or 900 acres of land in the area. We also conduct community stewardship projects and provide educational opportunities, especially for youth. Most of our work is funded through donations from our uh, community members. Everyone is very generous. And if you're interested, a membership is only $35 per year. Next, please. <clears throat> so if you're not familiar with Christmas bird counts themselves, just a <coughs> rundown of the history, back in the 1800s, it was a Christmas day tradition for some folks to go out and shoot as many birds as they could. On Christmas day in 1900, ornithologist Frank Chapman, he proposed that instead of going out and shooting the birds, that they'd go count them instead. He realized that shooting birds was not very good for conservation. So in that first year in 1900, 25 Christmas bird counts were held, including one in Toronto. Nowadays, there's uh, over 2000 Christmas bird counts taking place all across the Western hemisphere. But instead of them taking place just strictly on Christmas Day, they can take place anytime between December 14th and January 5th. All the data that's collected is available for scientists and conservationists to use. Since these counts have been held over 100 years now, some locations they have 100 years worth of data and you are able to see some trends that uh, folks can use to make conservation minded decisions. Next, please. So here's a quick map showing of where all the Christmas bird counts take place in the Western Hemisphere. Most of them are in the United States and southern portions of Canada. But in the last few years, a lot have popped up in Mexico, um, the Caribbean, Central America, even now into South America now, and uh, some of the islands out in the Pacific Ocean. They haven't spread to Europe or Asia or Africa yet. I'm not sure if that'll ever happen, but it'll be interesting to see over time how far these counts grow. Next, please. So the Deborah Christmas bird count. This was established by the Kensington Conservancy back in 2016. So compared to a lot of the other counts, this is a relatively young one. The Sault Ste. Marie Christmas bird count has been happening since the 1950s. So We've got a long ways to go to get as much data as they've collected, but uh, we're getting there. The, each count circle, no matter where it is, has a radius of 12 kilometers. Ours is centered um, right in Deborah at the location of the former Kensington Conservancy office, which was uh, in the gas station parking lot in an office trailer, that trailer, which is now home to uh, Looney Tunes, Pontoons, and Power Sports. So that, that was where the... the um, where we were in 2016, so that is uh, the center of our circle. You'll see that it includes the towns of Richards Landing, Hilton Beach, and Bruce Mines. It also has sections of uh, Laird Township and uh, Johnson Township to the north. So all, all uh, 
all the birds that get counted have to be within this circle. If you're even technically a few meters outside, it doesn't count. Next, please, Alice. So the 2021 count. So unfortunately, I don't have the great ability at, of uh, predicting weather so far in advance. Um, the one thing is you have to pick the date at least a few weeks, if not a month or two before you actually do it in order to be able to plan. This year, December 27th, it was a miserable day. It was snowing, it was windy, it was cold. It was not ideal for bird watching. Here's uh, you know, not a not so great photo of a blue jay because it was hard to get good photos that day. Next, please. Oh. So as I said, it took place on December 20th, 2021. We always like to do ours um, usually between the 27th and 30th of December each month. They encourage that you always do it around the same time frame. You don't jump from the beginning of the period to the end. So that's when ours always happens. This year, we had 14 field observers. Usually we hope to have more. These are folks that go out within the count circle and look for birds. But due to COVID-19, um, we couldn't really have groups going out together. It kind of had to be people on their own. So uh, that limited the amount of people that could participate that way. But we had 15 feeder watchers participate, participate which was almost a record for us. So it was good to see so many people um, watching their feeders at home. We recorded 33 species. This is actually the lowest total that we've had in six years, but only by one. So that's not too bad. And then we counted a total of 1,780 birds, which I think was the second lowest ever. And again, here's a picture of uh, American goldfinches at uh, the feeders at the Kensington Conservation Center. Not a good photo because it was, you know, it doesn't really look like it's snowing that bad, but it was. So the photos weren't great. Next, please. So some of the highlights, despite the bad day, there were some pretty interesting birds found. The first one here is an American kestrel. You'll know if you're familiar with the area here in the spring, summer, and fall months, American kestrels are a fairly common bird. They often, you'll see them driving, while you're driving, sitting on the power lines, watching for small rodents or large insects like grasshoppers or moths to uh, eat. So, but in the winter time, they're not really here. Um, but this one was, it decided to stick around. This was found by Rob Rutledge in his section and was a first record for the Deborah Christmas bird count. Not a great photo. Again, the conditions didn't allow for it, but you can see the beautiful coloring of an American kestrel there. If you're not familiar with American kestrels, they're the smallest species of falcon that we have here in North America. Next, please. The second highlight was a northern flicker. Again, this woodpecker species is very common spring, summer, and fall months, but in the winter time, not so common. Actually, this year throughout Algoma, there's been quite a few hanging around. I'm not sure if that's if there's anything to read into that or it's just coincidence. But they've uh, in the winter time, there's not many insects for them to eat, or uh, so they often show up at bird feeders in the winter time. And this one was in Bruce Mines and was again, was the first record for our count. Next, please. So in addition to some new species, we also had two new high counts. One was American goldfinch. We recorded a total of 309. The previous high was 234. And red-bellied woodpeckers, we recorded six of them. The previous high was four. Red-bellied woodpeckers are an interesting species locally. They used to be very rare, even in Southern Ontario, but likely due to climate change, they have been rapidly expanding their range northward. And now even locally are fairly common. They're still not an everyday woodpecker like hairy woodpecker, or downy woodpecker, but they're definitely not rare. Um, so every year it seems we're getting more and more of them, especially, you know, the same thing happens with the Sault Ste. Marie Christmas bird count every year, there's more and more of them. So if you haven't seen one of these around here, Keep an eye out, you might see one soon. Next, please. So the most abundant birds, I'll just go down the list here. Common red pole, American goldfinch, black cap chickadee, blue jay, American crow, European starling, morning dove, common raven, pine grosbeak, and wild turkey. 
This is pretty similar to our most abundant, abundant bird list every year. It's usually the same, uh, same birds that make this list. And there's a picture there of a flock of common red poles. This one, I think I saw a couple of days after the Christmas bird count on a nice, bright, sunny day. It's too bad we didn't do it that day. <laughs> Next, please. So count week. In addition to the birds that we see on count day, the Christmas bird count also allows us to keep track of how many species we see within the count circle for the three days before and the three days after the count but not species we saw on the count day itself. This year, we recorded a record high eight of these species. This is probably because we missed so many good birds on the day of the count because it was so bad, but the day before and the day after were beautiful days that allowed people to get out and the birds were actually showing. So long-tailed duck and buffle head, um, these two, they have the asterisks beside them because they're actually brand new species for our count list in total. We've never recorded them in the past. Then we had common golden night, hood and merganser. These birds were probably around on count day, but if where there was open water, it was so cold with that wind blowing off and the waves were so big that, you know, it, it wasn't fun to stand there watching for them. And then it would have been really hard to pick them out if they were there. They were probably actually, uh, you know, tucked away in some bay somewhere out of sight. We had a loon that was seen a day before and the day after the count out of Hilton Beach. There was, you know, there's some debate over what species it was. It could have been a common loon, but it could have been a much rarer species. It wasn't conclusive, I don't think. So um, we're just leaving it as loon spa for now. And then rough-legged hawk, hoary red pole, and snow bunting were the three other species that were seen within a week of the count, within the circle, but on a count day itself. Okay, next, please. So now that's those are the highlights from the count. I think there's one other brand new species that was seen common merganser, which is not a rare winter bird locally, but typically there's a lot of ice by the time our Christmas bird count rolls around. So there's not a lot of waterfowl this year. There was quite a bit of open water, which allowed us to see some of those things, including common merganser for the first time. But yeah, back to the review here. Of all the species that we've seen over the last six years, only 21 of them have been recorded every year. All of these are really you know, pretty common birds. So it's not a surprise. The one that's a bit of a surprise is house sparrow, but um, we do have a few known locations for house sparrow well within the count circle that they're seen every year. The, the thing about house sparrows is um, locally, they aren't abundant like they are in Southern Ontario or more populated areas, but they are found in farms. But when it's cold outside, they rarely ever show themselves. They hide away in the barn and stay warm. So I guess we're kind of lucky that we've actually recorded them every year because a lot of the Christmas bird counts have been pretty cold. Next, please. So in total, over six years, we recorded 65 different species. Um, and five of these species have only, plus five species that have only ever been recorded during count week. Some of the highlights that we've seen over the last few years have been varied thrush, which is a uh, robin-like bird from the West Coast, but is known to show up in Ontario and to you know the east side, east side of North America from time to time. Um, they're very pretty if you've never seen one. We've had northern hawk owl, snowy owl, and great gray owl all show up. These are northern owl species that come south in the winter time and are always exciting to see. We had a boreal chickadee a few years ago. These are uh, similar to black capped chickadees but are found more in the boreal forest. So you have to go up to the kind of the Wawa area to find them. And the hermit thrush and great blue heron, two common birds in the summer months, but in the winter time, very unusual to find here. And then here's a chart showing, you know, over the last six years, our totals. And I got a few graphs here following that'll kind of be easier to show. So next, please. So number of birds per year. As you see in 2021, it was just above 2016, which was our first year. Um, much lower than last year. I think last year we recorded so many birds because we had very mild temperatures throughout December, even more mild than this year, which allowed a lot of birds to linger a lot longer than usual. So we took advantage of that and counted lots. But besides 2020, you know, it's, you know, fairly consistent with how many birds we get each year. There's not too much variation in the graph. 
The next graph is species per year. So again, we only had 33 species this year, which was one lower than our first year of 34. But over the six years, there hasn't been a whole lot of variation. It's been pretty consistent. Low to mid 30s is the low and just over 40 is the high. You know, no matter what, you're going to get variation every single year. So it's, there's a trend starting that that's kind of how many species we're going to get every year. Next. So if you're interested in seeing the full data set, you can find it on <coughs> Kensington Conservancy's website at kensingtonconservancy.org slash Christmas dash bird dash count. I'll also, as of tomorrow, have it linked on our homepage. You'll be able to download an Excel file that has the data from every year um, broken down into each section for the Christmas bird count and then each year as well. So if you're into stats and data and into birds, definitely check that out. It's quite interesting. And here's a picture of a snowy owl that was found during the Christmas bird count a few years ago. Next, please. So that's all for tonight's webinar. Um, before we get into a question period, I'm just going to give a plug for our next webinar, which is taking place February 23rd at 7 p.m. Carl Healy from Garden River First Nation will be giving a talk on some of the Indigenous history for the local area. We don't have all of the details of his talk yet, but we hope to have that ready to release next week. So watch for that. If you'll, uh, you'll get an email from it, if you're subscribed to the Kensington Conservancy's email list, and if not, either reach out to me, watch it for on social media, or join our mailing list. So there should be one last slide here, which is a thank you. Thanks for coming out tonight. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the results of the Christmas bird count. This is my contact information here at the Kensington Conservancy, in case you're interested in reaching out to me. I can provide more information about the Christmas bird count or about our activities in general. So now we're going to open it up for any questions. So feel free to unmute yourself, turn on your screen and uh, ask away or ask away in the chat. Carter, it's Alden. Thanks for this uh, good, good presentation. And I, I know, uh, the weather must have been bad because your pictures are always so amazing. So to have a blurry <laughs> picture from you means it must have been hellacious out there. Yeah. So thanks for thanks for doing this. Um, question I have is if you could say a little bit, I know five years isn't a lot of time, but any interesting trends we've seen over the five years in terms of species going up or down or more species or you know any other ecologically significant trends you wanna comment on? No, I think it's still too early for that. All the differences that I've seen in, you know, counts over the years um, can all be written off to just the conditions of the day or, um, you know, variation in year to year because bird, you know, it's not the same every year for birds. You really got to get a long data set, like looking at the Sault Ste. Marie Christmas bird count data set, which is 50, 60 years long. Um, it's, you know, you can really start to see trends over 20 years is when you start to see them. So I think it's too early for that. So eventually we'll get there, but yeah, there's nothing really to say now. Yeah, that's good. I, I know when I was working with the Union of Concerned Scientists, we did a report on climate impacts on the Great Lakes that included Ontario and the predictions were for pretty dramatic northern migration of bird territories over you know, the period out to 2040, 2050. So I, I didn't know if any of the counts were starting to show up any of that, Sault Ste. Marie, or any of the counts with larger history, or is it just still too early to tell? Yeah, the only one I know for Sault Ste. Marie, you can definitely see it with the red belly woodpeckers. There was, you know, for years and years, there was none, and then there was one. And then there's nothing, 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 and then there's one. And then eventually there started being one every year. And now we're, you know, and then every year it's growing. The similar kind of things happened with Carolina wren. They're starting to be more consistent in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, you can see that, but yeah, Southern Ontario ones might be showing that a little bit more. We're just far enough north that it hasn't quite got to us yet, but it's, I think it's coming, so. Hi, Carter, Barry Lyons here. Hi, Barry. Uh, you're hearing me, okay. Uh, I just wanted to make a make a comment about that 
that Lun Lun Spa that was found the day before the yeah. uh, Christmas bird count. Uh, Kurt Zufeld taking the lead, and 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 I submitted made a submission to the uh, the uh, committee that makes decisions on whether or not these were uh, legitimate observations or not. The Ontario Birds Records Committee, which is an offshoot or a committee of the Ontario Field Ornithologists, and so there there is a submission by us. Uh, in front of the committee to determine whether or not what that species is, whether there's enough data to confirm that it's actually an Arctic loon. And so we're, we're waiting with, with uh, holding our breath to determine whether or not uh, we, we've got a new species in the region. Yeah, so if anyone is interested in that, the Ontario Bird Records Committee will be re releasing the results of that in August 2022. So there's quite a few months to wait, but We'll hear on that eventually. Thank you. Uh, Carter, um, Peter Wells here. Um, I wanna sort of follow on to Alden's question about, about trends. Do you think that the, 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 the later ice coming in, the fact that you know, the water was wide open effectively when the bird count was done versus other years, is that, do you think, one of the drivers of, of the big variability that you're seeing? You, you mentioned a lot of waterfowl species that hadn't showed up in years past. So it's, I, I'm just trying to see if there's a corollary between the numbers you're seeing in ice in versus ice out. Yeah, so a little bit, I guess. I mean, this year we had all, um, you know, water was wide open, but we had our lowest species count ever. So that doesn't really, uh, you know, prove that point, but uh, you know, the weather conditions, I'm sure if we had nice weather conditions, we might've blown past the record because of us getting all those ducks. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, you know, I think, I think last year was the first year we had any kind of open water at all, really. And we had our highest best total ever. So there might be something to that. I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, if next year everything's frozen over completely again, how we do. Um, but again, I think we need, you know, a few more years of that kind of data to really say for sure. Thank you. Hello, Carter. This is your father. Hello. <laughs> um, I know you probably answered it by saying that you didn't see any data trends, but anecdotally, I thought there appeared to be more American crows uh, this year. I don't know if the data showed that because generally we see more ravens, but on that day I saw in my area a lot more crows. Yeah, I've been, well, I've been seeing more crows on my drive to work, but that's just all in one spot where there's a lot of farming activity. So for those that don't know, um, in the winter months, typically common raven is the default large black cor cor corvid that you see locally. However, common, our American crows will overwinter in towns and in agricultural areas where there's sufficient food sources. Um, historically, I guess it used, you know, American crows used to be absent totally here in the winter time and then they return early to mid-March. Um, yeah, this year there were recorded, there was 144 American crows compared to um, 80 common ravens. But one thing I find is that where locations that do have overwintering, overwintering American crows have a lot of them. I remember the Christmas bird count last year, there was one single farm that had like a hundred, which uh, really, um, you know, boosts up that number compared to common ravens. But um, yeah, like, I don't know, did that answer your question? I kind of forget what the question was. <laughs> No, pretty I much. Talk, I just started talking about crows and ravens. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, like personally in my travels, I'm still outside of a few locations. I'm not seeing crows anywhere, but I know where your area was, was locations that would have crows. So, and it makes sense that where you do find one crow, there's usually lots of crows in the wintertime. Any other questions?
Okay, I don't think so. So um, with that, thanks to everyone for coming out tonight. And uh, well, I look forward to talking to you all again soon or uh, presenting another webinar to you. So have a good night, everyone. Uh, Carter, I Thank see you, Carter. I see something in the chat, Carter. Someone. Yeah, maybe. that was, yeah, oh, Violet was saying thing. thank you. Was a thank okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think we can all agree. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Carter. And, and thanks, Ron, for bringing uh, Carter into the world and sharing him with us. <laughs> no, no problem. You can thanks, have him. Carter. <laughs> thanks, Carter. Yeah. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah.